Towards the end of the Second World War, there were attempts made by Nazi Germany to produce standardised series of tanks. There would be five different weight classes of vehicle, containing different specialised variants within each. This whole concept known as the E-Series aimed to improve German production rates of military vehicles and fix the issue involving unreliability of certain tanks. One of the biggest criticisms of the German tank industry during World War II was that it simply could not match the speed of production of say the Soviets with the T-34 or the Americans with the Sherman. Ultimately their loss during the conflict was partly contributed to the speed of manufacture and many considered that German tanks were actually better than Soviet and American vehicles, however there simply wasn't enough German vehicles to go around. The concept of average tanks en masse defeating fewer, yet more technically superior tanks is a popular idea. Today we look in a bit of detail at one of these E-tanks, the E-75 Standard Panzer, which initially was designed and planned to replace the colossal Jag Tiger or Tiger II, also known as the King Tiger. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. The King Tiger is an absolutely colossal tank, however there were a large number of issues that it faced which greatly hindered its ability on the battlefield. It was extremely heavy, and the engine and gearbox often broke down as they were underpowered. It was also extremely difficult to move by road or rail, and had issues crossing bridges, and overall its mobility wasn't great. What was fantastic however was the armament on board, which could wipe out any allied vehicle at a large range. So the gun was a deadly weapon, but it did suffer from reliability issues often. Many of these extremely large and expensive tanks would in fact be ditched by their tank crews if they broke down. So to combat this, the E-Series of Standard Tank was considered to replace the King Tiger, and specifically the E-75 Standard Panzer was considered. This would have hopefully been the standard heavy tank of the Wehrmacht, and would have been built on the same production and assembly line as other E-tanks such as the E-50, which was also planned to replace the Panther or Tiger I. According to designs, the E-50 and the E-75 would have nearly identical hulls, but they would differ in armour thickness. These two vehicles would share many different components, which would obviously improve manufacture, but also should they have broken down, parts would have been easier to get hold of. The E-75 would have had significantly stronger and improved hull armour to the Tiger II, and would have weighed in at a whopping 75 tonnes. This weight would contribute towards a slower vehicle, with speculation pinning the prospective vehicle's speed at around 40 km an hour. To help combat the problems that the King Tiger had with weight distribution, the bogies would be spaced differently, with an extra pair on each side to give the E-75 a better track to ground contact length. The Americans would receive information regarding the E-75, and found that the weight reserve of the chassis meant that self-propelled guns could be used and built on the chassis, but this would increase the weight of the vehicle to around 80 tonnes. The self-propelled gun variant could possibly have been fitted with a 149mm L-52 gun, however there isn't much concrete information regarding the armament of the E-75. According to some sources, the E-50 and E-75 would have been fitted with the same turret, an 88mm L71 or L100 gun. They would also be fitted with an optical rangefinder for helping with long range accuracy as well. Some of the sources also state that the tank was to be fitted with a larger turret than what was found on the King Tiger, and could have been adapted to house a higher powered 105mm gun. Krupp was allegedly scheduled to design a new turret for the vehicle that would have an electric turning mechanism. The E-50 and E-75 wouldn't just share their main weapon on board, but also an engine. It is believed that the V-shaped 12-cylinder Maybach HL234 would have been used. This engine would have needed to be tweaked however to make it more reliable, but this specific engine also had a direct fuel injection, and had the capability to install a turbocharger, raising the power output to 1000 brake horsepower. The engine would have been connected to an 8-speed hydraulic gearbox, the gearbox, turning mechanism and final drives would have all been built as a single unit, and this allowed about a tonne of weight to be saved, and also subsequently shortened the time of build by around 25%. This meant that a quarter of the time developing and making the E75 would have been saved, meaning more of these vehicles could have been created. The Germans would have had high hopes for the E75 in the E series of tanks, however at this point of the Second World War in early 1945, they would have had more pressing matters at hand than developing these new vehicles. The war was ultimately coming to an end, and the days of the Third Reich were looking numbered, and these vehicles were still in early development, 
and there was no chance of mass production happening anytime soon. German industry at the time was suffering from Allied bombing raids, and in the latter months of the war, there would be an extreme shortage of manufacturing materials. However, if the war would have continued on, and the E-75 would have made it into the army, and at the hands of the tank commanders, it would have probably not done much to turn the tide of the conflict. On the Eastern Front, it would most probably have faced T-44s and IS-3s, and with the plans that the Soviets had for their newer vehicles, then German tanks wouldn't have stood much chance, especially as these couldn't be mass-produced on a scale that the Soviets could. So in conclusion, the creation of the E-75 was initially to replace the King Tiger, and the designs would most probably have indicated to fixing most of the flaws with the Tiger II. However, ultimately the E-series of vehicles, as a whole, came far too late in the war to even enter mass production, but the idea of a standard tank design is interesting. Should this concept have been introduced at the start of the conflict, then who knows what would have occurred with these vehicles on the battlefield, but there would have been certainly many more devastating German tanks flying out of the factories. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thanks for watching.